No, my computer can't handle it. All right, so hello everybody. We'll go ahead and get started. Um, thanks for joining us tonight. And for those of you who might be watching two back-to-back -back meetings, um, congratulations, you get a prize. Um, I just wanna go over a few of the, I think, most frequently asked questions um, and a list of <laughs> um, a list of things that I want to make sure that everyone um, is aware of and that maybe have been tripping people up or with all of the craziness and I will be honest it truly has been a crazy summer um, anyone who has been in receipt of an email from me in the last two days has probably seen the evidence of that I apologize heavily to the second grade parents who, in trying to fix errors, I think I just stepped in it and made it probably more difficult than it needed to be. So I do apologize for that, but um, we're getting through it. And um, let me just begin. Um, so open house, in the emails that everyone should have gotten that had the teacher placement, it had a time to come in for open house which is um, important not only because we want to see you and have you meet your teacher, um, but for especially for the remote families, we have materials that we need to get to you. So if you um, can please come in and grab those materials, it's things like textbooks, workbooks, actual manipulatives to use, um, all of those things need to be returned to us because these are things that I've purchased this year for remote learning. Obviously, the only thing that doesn't need to be returned is the actual workbook pages, which the kids will be using and writing in. That doesn't need to come out. Yes, good idea. We will introduce ourselves as we go through. Um, so a lot of the hands-on materials and we're gonna give the younger kids um, magnetic blocks and things like that. So all that kind of stuff we're gonna need back from you. Um, at the end of the year, but it's important for you to be able to come and pick that up during the open house. Um, and for the kids who are doing hybrid, we're going to give you a small packet of materials to do because obviously school starts on the 14th, right? The 14th? Yes. Thank you. Um, <laughs> and the kids coming in on Thursday, Friday, we can't actually have them start with remote stuff because we don't have the ability to give them their long on and things like that. So we have a packet of just some um, dittos and materials and things like that for them to be doing. Um, so we want them to come and get those things as well. Um, and everyone should have gotten an email about picking up computers. And we had a huge um, request for computers more than we had actual computers to hand out. So we're hoping that some people can make do with what they were using last year until we get our order of Chromebooks in. So um, we hope that people can help us out with that. We are also holding, and I'm excited about this, we have a parent right here in district, Amy Jenkins, who is going to be doing a parent Zoom with everyone on September 16th at seven o'clock. Um, I'm not gonna read the chats because they distract me. So I'm just gonna leave them for Anne who's gonna read them for me after. Um, Amy Jenkins, who's gonna do a parent Zoom on everything Google Classroom and Zoom for parents who um, might not know Google Classroom or might not know how to turn in papers through the classroom and it's just sort of a get to know everything remote. Um, she did two days with our staff and did a wonderful job. Um, and so she will be doing that for parents just as a get to know, know um, the Google Classroom and how to become familiar with it, know what to expect from it. So when a teacher is saying, oh, we need this back, you'll know how to do that and help your children um, maneuver through Google Classroom. And while we're talking about Zoom, I wanted to hit on a few of the expectations we have for when kids are on Zoom. Um, obviously this year's 
whole setup is going to be a little bit different. And what we want to do is make sure that kids, when they're on Zoom, have a few things happening, like that we're dressed. Um, you'd be surprised at some of the things that were happening in the background of your house that you might not have been aware of, but that because it's on Zoom, everyone else was. But so we're hoping that everyone is please dressed. It doesn't need to be in your formal wear, but um, you know, we're looking for more than pajamas. Um, we're hoping that everyone has a quiet turf space um, to work. We're looking for this to be, you know, a work space, not in the middle of, um, you know, the bedroom or on top of the kitchen table. Um, we need it to be friends having children not eating during the Zoom. Um, the camera should be on. And one of the big things is, is that for the kids to be let into the Zoom, we need them to have their name in their login. So if it says, you know, your name instead of your child's name or just iPad device or a number, that makes it really hard for us to let them into the Zoom um, because we don't know who it is. Um, and I know that that can be a little bit tricky if you have more than one person using the device, um, but we are asking that so the teachers know who they're letting into the Zooms um, just with all the security loveliness that we all know about. Um, a question that I had brought up this afternoon was for second grade, um, the difference between hybrid and remote. So after the initial two weeks where the kids are coming in, um, there really isn't going to be a difference. So the kids who have signed up for hybrid in second grade after the initial two weeks, your kids are Zooming every day, all four days with their teachers. It's not sort of two days of a hybrid doing one thing and then the second day is doing something different. It will be the same thing all four days with the Wednesday still being the um, sort of odd day with half day planning. Um, so it really will look very much the same all four days, whether you're remote or hybrid for the second grade. Um, parent drop off and pick up. So the loop is going to stay the same for us um, in our building, but the difference is, is that we used to accept kids coming into the building starting at eight, but because of spacing and needing, you know, so much distance between the kids at this point, um, we can't have kids coming in now until 815 because we don't have anywhere to house the kids. So 8.15 will be when we start letting kids into the building. Um, when we open up parent drop off, um, sorry, I see friends peeking up behind. Um, so at 8.15 is when we will have the parent loop starting. It'll be the same thing as always, if your child is independent and can get out of the car and walk into the student door, great, come on through. If your child needs more help, um, and isn't independent, then we'll have you park and walk your child either to the student door or to the front door. If you are a preschool parent, um, we will have you come into the school and into the auditorium at 8.20. Um, we won't have you come in and hang out in the lobby. We have you not come in until 8.20. And for the afternoon preschool people, it'll be 12.10. Um, and you'll be in the auditorium and get picked up by your, um, your child's teacher right after that. And then the afternoon, um, I wanna make sure everyone realizes that parent pickup is no longer in the auditorium and it will get a little hairy, I'm sure. So I'm asking for lots of smiles and patience and deep breaths from us all. Um, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna be printing out your last name on a large, brightly colored piece of you know oak tag or whatever that you will attach to your visor on your window. When you pull into the lot, into the loop, we're gonna have you, you know, push that down so we can see the last name. There's gonna be staff out in the parking lot. They're gonna radio the last name to us and we're gonna gather your children from the auditorium. If you have, you know, a kindergartner and a third grader or a second grader and a fifth grader, they're all gonna be in the auditorium. So if you have a younger child in the Smoning Center, your elementary child will also be with us in that one location. 
um, we'll get them all and we'll bring them out into the loop and bring them to your car. And so we will check their last name to your last name and get them in and off you go. So we anticipate that this will be a bit of a backup for a while. Um, but again, it sort of is what it is. Um, I know that the um, ideal situation is that everyone lines up on one side of the road. So it may be that you have to go past the school to line up so that you can turn right into the school. Um, but we're hoping that it gets faster and quicker and that because we only have half the kids in at a time, it isn't going to be, you know, too much of a headache. If you have a different family picking up your child, we're going to print out the name three times so that, you know, if you have multiple cars or a family that usually picks up your child, you'll have to have both of those last names on your visor. I'm almost there. And then we're going to go to questions, I promise. I see them flash in there. Um, a quick few other things, just reminders. Um, Please, if you can, write your child's last name in the masks. We assume that we're going to find these all over the place, just like we do the random shoe, you know, a sock, the mittens, whatever we find. The, we always find stuff in the hallway. So please get your name in there, and then we can get it sent home. Um, we will have extras to um, give out in the meantime. Also, if you have an extra mask that you can keep in their backpack, that's always good as well. Um, Things that we can't have at school and don't need, um, please, just with all of the health precautions, are things like toys, stuffed animals, books, stuffies, you know, um, all that stuff. We have to be really careful. That really all needs to stay at home next year. Um, and that includes actually devices. I've had a lot of parents asking if we want the devices coming to school in the Simonian Center, and that's a hard no. Um, it's just, the kids are so young, we don't want to have them responsible, um, and then we don't want to be responsible for them to bring their devices to and from school. When they're here in school, um, we want them here, not their equipment, so that's strictly for home. They don't need to be carrying it back and forth. And that's my list. So, Anne, I'm going to turn it over to you. Okay, great. And so you can introduce yourself. I am, hello everyone, I'm Ann Korn. I am the assistant principal of the middle high school and I'm just here to help out with the chat. Um, so first question, for the first week of school, um, will there be virtual learning for cohort B on Monday and Tuesday, the 14th and the 15th? Right, so no, that's why we need you to come to the open house and get that packet of materials and activities to do because we won't be able to have the remote service going at that point. Okay. If we are on remote learning, do we automatically get a Chromebook? No, that was part of the survey that went out. If you needed one, um, you needed to say so in that survey. If that has changed and you need one, um, you can email me and I will get that information out to our tech director. Um, is there going to be a video sent out to the kids from the principal to lay out the expectations for the school year? Um, I didn't have that in mind, but I can certainly do that. That's a great idea. Um, oh, yeah, that would be a nice way to connect with kids before the right. school year starts. I'm just going to make a note of that video yeah. of expectations. That's a great yes, idea. Thank you. Kid friendly. Idea. Yeah. yeah. Um, does each student need to have their own Zoom account? So yes. Oh, Zoom account. Zoom, no. yep. What happens okay. is the kids will sign in with their school email address, which every student will have. And so they just need to have the app of Zoom to be able to enter into the Zoom. Right. And um, I think if there's multiple people on one account, they would just have to change the name in between. Um, I know right. you can do that by using, you know, the settings like in your, on your screen. And that's what I was talking about when we say we want to know who it is that you're signing in as. Um, just so we know, again, you know, like if it says grandma, well, we don't know who grandma is, so we needed to say your child's name. Right. Um, okay. Could you please clarify why there needs to be a half day of planning if we are full remote after the first two weeks of school? Sure. So, um, 
the planning is coming from a lot of the feedback that we got last year, which was that parents were feeling a few different things. One was that um, there seemed to be a lot of differences going on. Even if kids were in the same grade level, we got a lot of feedback that they didn't feel like the same thing was happening across the classrooms. They felt like if they had one teacher, they might have been having a great experience and a different teacher, they felt like maybe they weren't having the same experience or that the learning was very different depending on which classroom you were in. So what we're doing is we're able to use that half of day to plan so that there really is a very continuous experience, a very guaranteed curriculum um, so that teachers are really and truly, their performance might be different in terms of the art of teaching and the way that they deliver the material, but that the material and the curriculum that the kids are getting is very much the same each day, every week. Um, and the second part of it is to make sure that um, we're making sure that the kids are, um, I'm sorry, I just lost my train of thought. It's why there's a prep day? Yes. Yes. And so the second part of it is that because the kids are doing remote, the teachers have to do essentially double the planning. They have to plan what they're doing in the classroom and then they're planning what's happening during the remote days. So they have to have the time to do both of those things working with their whole class, their whole team, excuse me. Okay. Um, how do you know if your child will be assigned a laptop? My email says they will be handed out on the first day. So if you, that again goes back to the survey that went out. Um, if you had marked that you did not have a laptop, then um, we have put you on the list as needing one. So there was that initial survey that went out. It asked you which type of learning program you wanted, if you wanted hybrid or remote, if you had a um, laptop or device to use at home, if you didn't, it was all part of that survey. Will there be any bus service? Yes, so that was another another survey that went out actually previous to the learning survey um, that was asking if you wanted bus service. Um, and so um, if you said that, yes, you wanted service, we have put you on the bus list. Again, if this is sort of news to you and you're not sure what it is, or if you've joined us after this survey went out, please send me an email. Okay, so a little bit of um, question about pickup and drop off. Um, yes. At the elementary school meeting, uh, Mrs. Harrison said that if they if families have a student in the ELC and in the elementary school, that they would have to go through two separate drop offs. Can you just clarify that, please, how that's going to work? Okay, so my understanding is that if you have a child in both buildings, you would come to my parking lot because obviously the younger children we want and you know, understand that they have a little bit more need of support so that you would drop them off. They would walk into the student door, which is very close to our building. And then the older children would walk around either in front of the building and go in um, along where the buses are and into her main door further down, or that there would be staff supporting walking the children behind the building and going in the back door where her loop is. So, um, I, we will support that. I think dropping off in two separate locations makes it extremely frustrating for parents and is too much to ask. So I will support the fact that if you have children in two different buildings, you can drop them off just at my building and we will get your older children where they need to be. Um, how will social distancing work if all of the children are in the auditorium? So we have enough room for the kids to be seated in it's the small seats. Um, so they will be seated multiple seats apart. They will still have their masks on. It will not be six feet. We don't have enough room for that, but it will be at least three feet. Um, and they will be grouped by age level by classroom um, for hopefully a short amount of time um, before we move them outside. And we, once we know that the car is here, we will start them lined up outside. Um, just to reiterate, no Chromebooks in school. Students right. do not need Chromebooks in school. Nope. And same thing. So they shouldn't have a phone because of that whole electronic piece in our student handbook. There really shouldn't be any electronics with 
our kids. Okay. Are both parents and or siblings allowed to come to the open house? So we would prefer not to have siblings if at all possible. Um, just again, because of the numbers and the crowding, but both parents are fine. And so it, that, you know, if that necessitates a, a sibling, then it is what it is. Okay, please review. No remote learning for hybrid kids on Monday and Tuesday, the first week of school. There's no hybrid for either Monday, Tuesday, or Thursday, Friday. On the, at the open house, the kids are all gonna get a packet of work to do for their remote days that week because we can't get them set up quick enough to be, so they'll have work to do. It won't be on Zoom though. It will be like hands-on, worksheets, assignments in a packet that you need to pick up from open house. Okay. When will we find out what our date, what days our child is going into school during the first two weeks and who their teacher is? So when do they find out cohorts and teachers? Um, all of that information went out via emails last week. So if you can write down who that was and let me know, I'll have to get back to them. Okay, there's no last name. So okay. um, if that parent wants to message me privately, um, I can get that information to Ms. Miriam or you can just reach out to Ms. Miriam directly yep. through e email. Yep. Okay, um, what is going to happen with the kids on IEP, IEPs and receive daily services? So we are working closely with um, Andrea who is the new special ed director and um, it will be, there's a sort of range of services for children who are, um, we find in most need, those children might be coming in for services um, for an extra day or two. Um, many of the children, they might be able to get their services for the days that they're in school. Um, and for some children who are sort of in that mid range, it may be that they get some of their services in school and then would get some of their services through remote um, Zooms on the days that they're at home. So, um, be expecting a phone call from your special education teacher um, to set those details up. Are children in kindergarten through first grade being required to wear a mask? And if they are, what kind of mask is required? So the answer to that is yes. And I don't know if Katie or Karen want to respond to the what kind of mask that would be maybe your areas. Sure, I'm actually going to discuss that during um, my presentation. Is that okay? Sure. Okay. So the answer is yes, we expect the kids to wear them. And, I, and there's maybe some of you who are like, oh my God, my kid's never gonna wear a mask. Um, we ask that you send it in and with the expectation that they wear it because um, part of what we're doing is talking about the culture of how it, what it means to wear a mask, why we're doing it. Um, and we have found, because we had kids in over the summer, um, that the kids really are much more flexible and do a much better job wearing it, especially when they see other kids wearing it. Um, and we worry sort of in part about if they're not wearing it, they then have to be that much further apart from the other kids and we don't want anyone to be stigmatized for not wearing their mask. So we have that sort of anxiety about it as well. So please have them come in with a mask and let us worry about um, having them get used to it and, and let us deal with sort of the um, mask breaks and allowing them to get adjusted to it. Okay, well, we'll go to this question then. Um, so speaking of mask breaks, what will mask breaks and recess look like during the day? So we will have two built-in mask breaks in our day. The first one being snack time and the second one being recess and lunch. Um, but we also, I've spoken very directly with my teachers that they need to read the room. That, you know, if the kids are getting antsy and everyone's touching their face and can't sit still, then we need to put pause and we need to take a break. And so they're being instructed to take that time to stop what they're doing, to pack the kids up and to go out into the either outdoor space. A lot of the teachers in our level have 
an outdoor either patio or some grassy space or if they don't they can go out into the um recess areas and use that space and take the time because it is an adjustment it can be a long day and so this isn't we don't want this to be a jail like setting it's a you know getting used to it it's a getting you know adjusted to it all so we're going to build up to it um no one is going to be blowing a whistle yelling at your child that they're not wearing their mask you know the right way or for a long enough time this is all you know sort of a cultural setting of we're getting used to this we're building up to it all the desks are spaced six feet apart um so this is a learning process okay who will be the remote in, uh, who will be a remote instructing our kids when their assigned teachers are also scheduled to in-person instruct another class? Great question. So what we have done in kindergarten and first grade um, is essentially the kids are going to have two teachers. They're going to have their in-class teacher that they see on school days. And then they have a second grade level teacher that is their remote teacher. And this is another reason why we need those planning days um, because those teachers need to work together as a continuous unit. Um, so they will have their in-class teacher who's teaching new material, um, introducing new subjects, and then they have a second grade level teacher, always the same one, it's the same remote teacher for the entire grade who's going to be reviewing material, having them do their practice lessons with it, having them, you know, do worksheets and tasks, and she's going to be um, setting up their remote days. Um, because obviously we can't have the teacher in the classroom and doing remote at the same time. So that's the way we broke it down. So essentially they have two teachers next year. Okay. For kids in car seats, will the parent be allowed to step out to buckle them in or will the person bringing them out be doing this? For parent pickup, I'm assuming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so what I would say is, um, I think we would just buckle them in um, because otherwise we're gonna have to have you, if we can manage it, we'll buckle them in. If it's something that we're struggling with and having difficulty, We'll have you pull into a parking spot, have you do it, and then exit the parking lot. But I think it makes more sense for us to do it and saves everyone time and headache um, to do it that way. Okay. This is just an FYI. Um, Zoom seems to save the name of the, late, the last user. There's five people in this house doing Zoom calls, and we could not find where to change the name until you were already let onto a call, which I can totally understand that because you use the three little dots in your corner to change your name. Um, we can also look into that because that's a good question. Yeah. Okay. Um, are all of the second grade teacher assignments already distributed? We have not heard anything yet. So again, yes, we emailed everyone. So um, I would say check your spam folders or again, if you haven't heard anything, please reach out to me directly because we, delivered them all. Like literally, I emailed everybody last week. So, <laughs> so something happened somewhere. Um, when will we get bus schedules? Yeah, so I'm not quite sure. Um, we sent out all the names and everything to the bus company. I'm assuming probably not until a few days before school starts, just because it takes them time to put it all together. And I, we will send out an email, an all school email, as soon as we get notice that it's ready. So um, I know buses are tricky. Yeah. Um, couple questions about school supplies. Um, okay. Can you please let us know which of the school supplies from the list we should be bringing in for the second graders? So um, I spoke to my second graders, my second grade teachers today, and they are going to clarify that and we will put, we will send, um, we will clarify that and put that on our homepage. Um, the class, the supplies is on our homepage right now and I know that we sent it out earlier but we will do that. 
Um, I was just speaking to them today. So yes, we will do that and we will put it on the Simonian homepage so that you can check it. Um, we'll do that in the next day or two. Same thing for first grade too? Yes. Okay, great. Although first grade, first grade just needs everything because they will be in school for part of the time. So their list stays the same. How many children will be in each class? So I believe the max size per classroom right now is 13. And some of them are as small as eight. Okay. Um, if our child receives services for his IEP, but not enough to be required to be in person all the time, how do we go about having the hour or so a week in person if I'm willing to transport him? Um, I would say please contact the special ed office. Um, I'm not the expert on that and so I'm not sure. Um, that would be a question for Andrea um, Alves Thomas. Okay. Um, so this is a question that people might, a lot of people might have, so I'm just gonna ask it. Um, now that everybody is going to be remote learning after the initial two weeks, what is the value of one over the other anymore? So in second grade, there isn't really that much of a difference at all. It really has everything to do with when we have the kids come back to school is why we had the second grade choose. Um, it has everything to do with, hopefully, you know, in a short amount of time, we have everyone coming back to school. And so then that's why we needed people to choose was so that we knew who would be coming back into the building. Um, because for the second grade that's doing full remote, it really, there isn't after these two weeks really any difference at all. Okay. Um, so class lists have only been sent out for the Simonian Center. Um, and not the elementary school, correct? That's, that's correct. Because she said she was sending hers out this week, later this week. Okay. Um, what should we do if we cannot attend an open house, the open house? Um, if you cannot attend the open house and you're doing hybrid, we can just send the materials home the first day the kids are in school. If you're doing remote, um, we'll need you to contact um, the office for a time to come and pick them up. Okay. Will there be a summary at the end of this meeting with relevant contact info for follow-up? Yes, I can give, we can give out emails, absolutely. Okay. Will remote students be learning over Zoom with lessons taught by grade level teachers? Yes but there will also be support staff doing small groups um, and breakout rooms, but the teachers doing full remote are master degree teachers. How often will you be surveying the parents to find out how we feel that the hybrid model is going and will there be a work group for ongoing input? So my understanding is after the first two weeks and then after a month, we have planned to send out surveys. I don't know further than that at this point, but I know that that's in the works for right now. Right. And the administrative team will be working on this weekly to see how things are going. Absolutely. Yep. Um, can children wear neck gaiters? Katie? Sorry, I was just typing to that. Um, children cannot wear neck gaiters in school. Um, we're, re we're recommending the um, ear looped masks and I will get more into that um, during my presentation. I am going to be presenting just a little bit on health and safety. So. Thank you. Um, what date range can we expect to receive a call from our child's special ed teacher? So um, they, we have gone through it all, they've given it all. So I would say um, before school starts, I would say this week and next week. Um, when will we find out a more specific idea of times during each day that our remote only kindergartners will be expected to be on a Zoom call? 
And is it appropriate to reach out directly to your, the child's teacher? What was the second part of that? Is it appropriate to reach out to the child's teacher before um, the start of school? So I think that's, you will get at the open house a, an idea of those types of schedules. The teacher will have an idea of what that is. And things might migrate a little bit. And part of what we're gonna do um, it, as the teacher and the classroom is, you know, as things settle in, as schedules get worked out, things might get elongated, hopefully, or they may find that that's not a good time for the class and things might change a little bit, but they will have a general sense of the times of the day, how long they'll be. So they'll have a schedule to hand out at the open house. Okay. Um, can you just repeat when and where is the open house? So um, it is next week, Tuesday through Friday. It's from 2.30 to 3. And at the, the email that you got, hopefully, with the placement for your child, it gave you a day, a specific day, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday, from 2.30 to 3. Okay. And just to clarify again, you mentioned no Chromebooks at the school for hybrid the first week. No, we don't need Chrome, Chromebooks at all. Nope. No and electronics. Just a little thank you. You're doing a great job. Oh, thank you. Comment in there. <laughs> just throw that in, you know. Okay. Um, how often can we expect updates from the teachers slash principal about how things are going with the model of learning? Um, I think, well, I don't know. Um, I think fairly often. I think it's sort of ongoing. And so part of it is that I am anxious to hear from you guys as the parents as well. So I think emails from you are helpful. Um, and I will be sending out emails. I hesitate to say weekly because I think I don't want to bombard you guys with sort of just blabbing. Um, but I do want to keep in contact and give you a sense of things. So I would say every other week is probably a good sense of how to expect or when to expect an email from me. Um, and I think the teachers are very, you know, communicative and will definitely be, you know, giving you a sense of what it is that they need, what they need from you. Um, so especially for our younger students and the remote work that's going on, we're gonna have the remote teachers, but because, you know, these kids aren't reading on their own, we're gonna need you to be, um, present for part of the Zoom or for part of the remote classroom to help read them what the expectations are and what the homework is and things like that. So um, you're going to be naturally aware of what's going on and involved in that sense anyway. Will there be Title I services? Yes, there will. Um, it might be um, similar to what it was last year where a lot of it will be doing um, or be happening over Zooms so that we're not pulling them out of the class time while they're in school. Um, we ta we're talking today about how we think that that's probably a better use of the remote time is to do Title I during that time. Um, can you just reiterate when people will receive a school supply list? So the school supply list is posted on the school website. Um, it also went out with this Zoom alert, so you can scroll back through your email, and it was sent along with the invite to this Zoom, so you have it somewhere, um, but it's also on the school website. And for second grade, in the next day or two, we'll get out a better sense of what it is that the second grade actually needs. Um, is the remote teacher a teacher with a master's that has taught in the system before? With the exception of one new teacher, yes. And the, te the new teacher actually has been with us for two years. Um, so she's not new, she's just new to the teaching role. Um, if we have changed our mind about needing the bus, who should we contact? Send me an email and I will get that information where it needs to go. Um, is there an option to use the elementary school, middle high school spaces, gyms, et cetera? Well, those students are full remote, so kindergarten and first can use the space for social distancing, lunch, and mask breaks. Um, I don't know. I will. Well, 
middle and high school, we're all teaching in the building. So all the teachers will be there and we will have some of our special ed population in the building. Right. Um, students will be coming in the building when we're remote for services and things like that. So we, a lot of our space is going to be used. Right. And we are getting um, there, of course, on back order, like everything else in the world. Um, but we have purchased four tents, one per school um, to post outside so that there is some outdoor um, usage even in poor weather. Um, and about recess, um, because we'll be the only building here long term or short term or however you want to think about it, um, the Simonian Center will be using the entire back of the building. So the kids, when they go out to recess, they're going to be playing just with their own classroom, but they're going to have use of both playgrounds and this, the um, tarmac in between. So they're going to have a lot of good space. Um, they're not going to be all packed in together and they're going to have space to run around. Okay. Is there an option for essential employees or people that have to work during school hours for the remote learning days? For, for example, we'll be able to make up the schoolwork during after work hours, for example, from five to 7.30, if that is our only option. Will they be able to make up any work during 5 to 7.30 p.m. if um, parents are working during school hours for the remote learning days? Um, so they would, we are not allowed to videotape lessons when kids are on Zoom. Right. So there will not necessarily be recordings of Zoom for you to go back and watch if the teachers are presenting a lesson where it's only them and they're recording themselves, obviously those would be available. Um, but I would say that there's not necessarily a deadline for the kids turning in work by three o'clock. So if, if that's the idea, like if you need more time to work with your child to get stuff done, that's fine. So it's kind of a mixed bag of that for an answer. Okay. Um, all right. Michelle, go ahead. Sorry, Ann, to interrupt, but I just- That's I, okay, you're fine. I can see a lot of the Gator questions and Katie's gonna go over a lot of this, but I just wanted to d discuss uh, really quickly because I, I understand where you guys are coming from. Um, so there have been studies that have indicated that the Gators aren't as effective as preventing the, to prevent the transmission of COVID. So today I was on a call, we do calls twice a week with the Department of Public Health, DASC, there's a lot of different people on this call. And the local Board of Health people presented this question because most school districts are not allowing nylon gaiters in bandanas. So this person asked the DESI and DPH if they would come out. They kind of, I see what you're saying about the state. They didn't want to come up with a strong position on it, but they obviously said schools make it always a level higher. This, they have, they're just offering the bear, you know, suggestions. Most schools are opting for no bandanas and gaiters. So they did kind of pose that question for the state to kind of maybe come out with a little bit more stern language. Um, and they did make reference to the mask up campaign in the um, Massachusetts Department of Public Health. And it does describe the acceptable mask in that as well, which does not, does not list gators and bandanas. Thanks, Michelle. All right. Um, will we be able to choose to send our fully remote students back to school? Sorry, one more time. Yep. Will we be able to choose to send our fully remote students back to school? So yes, I don't have a clear understanding of what the process is yet, but there will be a process for people who want to make changes to do that every so often. Um, again, I need details, um, but each school every so often for families will have an option of making changes. Um, would the same go for the bus? Would you be able to change your need for the bus at any point? I don't know the answer to that actually. So I think the bus is either sort of yes or no because they, we don't even, they don't, the bus is no, it's sort of like a hard yes or a hard no. They are not as flexible with changing their schedule. Um, for second grade, when 
they do full remote, what are the expected hours that kids will need to be in front of the computer or devices? So it's a regular school day. They're not going to be sitting in front of the computer from 8.30 to 2.30, um, but the, there will be blocks of time throughout that day where they have Zooms that they're expected to be at. So it might be 8.30, it might be 9.30, it might be 11. And again, those schedules will be coming out, but we expect the kids to be actively participating except for maybe an hour at lunch um, to be doing schoolwork. Um, second grade definitely has more of like a um, class rotation type setup. Okay. Um, are, I know you, you talked about open houses. Are there open houses scheduled for preschool? So yes, um, preschool will be sending out a letter um, tomorrow and they're gonna have their open house as well. Um, I think they're doing it the 9th and the 10th um, for short, like 15 minute blocks or something like that. But so yes, they will be also having an open house. Okay. How often should we expect actual daily contact with the teacher during the week as compared to last year? Um, I would expect that you have it more because you're going to be, you know, walking through you're going to you have the option of sitting in on some of the zooms not that we necessarily expect you to be tied to it um and i think it depends on the teachers obviously some teachers you know are more heavily um on the reach outside than others um but i don't think it it will be radically different than what you had previously okay um some of these questions are starting to be repeats do you want me to keep going with them um I, people miss like people came in late and missed things. So only if you know it's something major that you think is okay. Um, if they've decided they no longer need bus transport, who should they contact? So again, just email that to me and I'll get it out. Okay. Can you explain by why Chromebooks won't be necessary? Why wouldn't they be required? So Chromebooks are required and necessary. They just don't need to come into school. They should stay at home. We don't want the kids to be responsible. Um, it's just a high value item that isn't needed at school. When they're in school, they're with the teachers, so it's not necessary while they're at school. They need them at home to do the remote work. Um. When will the updated supply list be on the website again? Because we did not receive this year's school supply list and the link on the website, there are the links to the 2019-2020 school year. Um, we might have forgotten to change the date. I will double check that first thing tomorrow. Okay, um, yeah, because the question is, should we go off that or can you include an updated link in the Slack? Um, the only thing that was different was that I put a box at the top for this year saying, please have a set of at home materials and ask them to have things like a pencil box at home, a work box at home that was like pencils, crayons, glue. So I asked you to get a second set of something so that when you're at home doing remote work, you had a set of materials at home, but I will double check to make sure that that's the one that's actually posted. Okay. Is there a possibility that second grade could be hybrid with the K in first grade? It is difficult to help children while parents are trying to work. I certainly understand that and agree. And if I had my way, they would be in the building with me starting the first day and I wouldn't let them go. Unfortunately, I don't get to make all the decisions. Um, so unfortunately, they won't be returning doing hybrid until the whole rest of the district does. And I feel for you, I absolutely do. And it's not by choice. The, the second grade classrooms are substantially smaller than the classrooms in um, K and first. And so we just don't have the spacing for them, um, which was a big part of the reason why um, we had to cut it off at first. Okay. Um, so this is just kind of a follow-up to one of the questions earlier. If parents are essential COVID-19 employees and grandparents will be helping remotely, 
How can parents ask questions or see the material taught in a lesson to assist the kids with questions? So if the parents aren't home during the day, how can they reach out and access so they, the material? Um, so I think they can certainly reach out to either, it depends, so was this, did they specify if they were second grade? No. So they can reach out to either the grade level teacher or the remote teacher. Um, Google Classroom is gonna have a boatload of information on it. So that's gonna be a huge resource for you as well. It's gonna have what the expectations are. It's gonna have some of the lesson material in it. It's gonna tell you exactly what we expect to be turned in. So just, even if you miss stuff, going into your, your child's Google Classroom is gonna be huge. And that's why we're having that parent um, Zoom training on Google Classroom because that's gonna be a huge resource for you. And but teachers you should, are willing to help, you know. Yeah, I mean, and, but you should, as always, you should feel free to email me, to email your classroom teachers because that's always gonna be your best way of getting information. Yep. Um, will there be homework? As in separate from remote during the school day work? So I think there may be some, but for the most part, you know, we feel like they're doing their sort of work at home doing all of this remote stuff. And so we're trying not to have a whole bunch of it because by the time they're done with their school, you know, being at home, doing all that stuff, we want them to be able to be, you know, kids and go outside and play and do something active and family based. And so there may be challenging activities, you know, this, it might be a challenge to do, it might be a fun activity, it might be, hey, you know, read for a little bit or do some practice stuff, but there's not going to be a ton of homework. Okay. Um, is it okay to have a laptop versus a Chromebook at home? Absolutely. Okay. And then I think that's the end of the chat, but there is a, I just wanted to thank you for all the, the amazing job you're doing, getting things ready for our children. You made it work last school year without notice, and I have no doubt that it will be fantastic this year. So props. Thank you. And I that work with absolutely amazing people in every single sector of this school. Um, and I, you know, will be honest that I lost my cool a few times this summer because it at times just felt like, you know, sort of that you roll the rock up the hill and it just sort of, you get to the top and it just rolls you over and you got to start again because everything from the state would sort of change and you kind of had to start all over again. But, um, you know, we care for these kids so much. This is why we're here. And I've just never met a group of people I, who I'm happier to lead because we do, we care about the kids. That's why we're here every day. And everyone I know is going to do their absolute best to make this kind of, you know, yucky situation the best we can for the kids. So thank you for saying that. We appreciate it. You really do. You know, I needed to give you the bright light <laughs> through all these clouds. Thank There's you. just so much. To... Oh, okay. Really so now I think we're ready to hand it over to the school nurses. So can Absolutely. you take it away? Sure. Okay. I'm going to try this share screen. Oh boy. I think about this. Okay. Don't forget to introduce yourself. I there will. You Can you guys see my screen? Yes. yes. Perfect. Okay. So my name is Katie Hopkins and I am one of the school nurses at the um, Simonian Center in elementary school. We have Karen Matson on who is um, the other school nurse at the Simonian in elementary and we have Michelle Donovan who is here. Um, she is one of the nurses in the middle school and the high school, and she's our nurse leader. So um, I'm just gonna touch briefly with all of you about some safety issues um, in returning to our school this year in the 2021 school year. Um, a lot of it is review from the email that was sent out to families. So it was a very thick protocol along with some um, a signs and symptoms list. So you can refer back to that if needed. So um, an important thing is to remember the three W's to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Um, the three W's wear a mask, watch your distance, and wash your hands. 
So hold on guys. Okay. In order to minimize the risk of spread, you should always wear a mask when out in public riding a bus or going to school. So it was discussed, um, mask use was discussed and it is our expectation of students within all of the schools to be wearing a mask. Um, maintaining physical distance of at least six feet apart and covering your cough or sneeze and immediately washing your hands. So masks in school, we did have a lot of questions about this. Acceptable masks are going to be air loop masks that are cotton or fabric and made out of two or more layers. They should also be laundered daily. Um, surgical masks are appropriate. They um, are disposable and they should be replaced daily and when visibly soiled or wet. Unacceptable masks are the nylon neck gaiters, bandanas, and masks with a valve or vent. It's also important for families to send in an extra mask with their child during the school day, um, for the school day, so an extra mask in their backpack will be an expectation. Um, and if needed, we do have extra masks for children. So again, masks are worn by everyone is the expectation. We're asking that families start having your child wear a mask at home to get used to wearing it. Make sure that it fits the children well. So make sure that it's not falling down under their nose. Um, the mask should be a tight fit, which goes under your chin and over your nose. There will be scheduled mask breaks throughout the school day, which Ms. Miriam did touch upon. So these are some signs and symptoms of COVID. I do, um, we all do realize that they can mimic other illnesses. And that's one of the trickiest things about COVID-19 is that it mimics many other illnesses. So we are gonna have a very low threshold for sending students home during the school day. Um, a fever, which is 100 degrees Fahrenheit or higher. Chills, shaking chills. Cough, which is not due to other known causes such as a chronic cough. Difficulty in breathing or shortness of breath new loss of taste or smell, a sore throat, a headache, nausea, vomiting, or diarrhea, fatigue when it's in combination with other symptoms, nasal congestion or runny nose, which is not due to other known causes such as allergies, um, which would be determined by your primary care provider, muscle aches or pains, or a rash. Oops, sorry. So um, we're also asking families to monitor their child every morning before sending them into school. You wanna monitor them for signs of illness, which we also sent out a sheet, which is easy to review in the morning. So doing a daily temperature check on your child. If your child is sick, we ask that you keep them home. Again, we're gonna have a very low threshold for sending students home during the school day. And you can refer to our full protocol on the Sutton District website. Katie, can you just clarify, if students are hybrid, they have to stay home every time they have a runny nose? So we're asking that they do stay home if they have any of the symptoms of COVID. So if they have a runny nose um, that's due to something such as allergies, you can contact your primary care provider. We're asking that parents go to their primary care provider to get an official diagnosis of something other than COVID-19. Um, unfortunately, with COVID-19, it mimics so many other illnesses and um, children have been found to have all of those previous symptoms that we, that we stated. Does that answer the question? I think so. Okay. Thank you. Um, so the protocol for sick students, again, um, please have them stay home when they're sick. Um, if a child is sent home due to illness, we will ask them to go see their primary care provider and have a note, um, a note provided to return back to school, or the child will have to remain at home for 14 days before returning to school. In addition to this, we are asking that caregivers be able to pick up their student, their child, within 30 minutes of the phone call from the health office. Um, so please make arrangements for alternative caregivers. So we're asking for a lot of communication this year between 
parents and the nursing health staff. Um, please reach out to us if you have any health concerns regarding your child. So ensure that your child's school nurse is aware of any condition that your child may have. If your child is going to be absent, please call and make the school aware and be very specific in the reasoning of why they are absent. I see a lot of um, questions coming in and we'll get to those. It's but okay, Michelle's, to... Michelle's got it. Awesome, She's on it. sounds good. Okay, so I'm just gonna do a little bit of um, question and answering with Mrs. Matson. So um, these are questions that came up in other Zoom meetings. So what happens if my student wakes up and doesn't feel well? They automatically stay home if they're mm -hmm. not feeling well. What happens if my student goes to school but is sent home sick? If they're sent home sick, we do need a doc doctor's note from your primary care physician as to what was wrong with them, if they're able to come back to school. If not, then they have to stay home for 14 days if we felt that it was one of these symptoms before mentioned because we have to be careful. So 14 days out or a doctor's note in order to come back to school. Um, what happens if a student in my child's class is sent home sick? We are working on a method to let people in that classroom know as to what is we're going to do if someone is sick. We obviously couldn't tell you who the child is or what it is that they have wrong with them, but we would let you know if something is going on in the classroom. What happens if one of my child's teachers is sick? That also, we would again inform the classroom as to the people in the class as to what's going to happen, but we're working on a method to do that, the best way to do that. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so um, we are now going to move forward to the medication drop off procedure for this year. It's going to hold on, Katie. Bit. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Mm -hmm. I have a, one more sick day question. Okay. Um, if, a, if a child, Okay, Michelle's answering in the chat. So the question was, if a child stays home sick one day, are they allowed to go back to school the next day without a doctor's note? And Michelle just said, they will most likely, they will most likely need a note, but we will be in discussion at that time to figure it out. Um, okay, so this is a question for Ms. Merriam. It's come up a couple times now. Um, so if the child has a runny nose or is in a situation where they need to quarantine at home, um, can they do remote learning? Would they be able to change their model of learning if they're in a quarantine? To the full remote situation? Yeah. Um, I, we would have to make plans for that, but yes, I would say that we, that is something that we would do. Okay, thank you. Go ahead, yeah, yeah, Sorry. we're here. We're here. Um, we're clear here. So guys, we I, I, I hear you with the, the notes from the doctors and I, I completely sympathize. This is not, again, the news we would like to be delivering either. Um, I can reassure you we've been getting um, this guidance from many medical professionals, I will say, and many schools are taking this uh, similar approach. Um, but if there's any of those like strange situations, I mean, anybody's not feeling well, we just can't take the risk of missing it. Um, and so that's why most nurses, we're really trying to make sure that the school year works and, and, and works well. So that's why we have to kind of be that way. Um, and, and again, we hate having to give that answer, but that's the way we have to handle it because we would just not want to see us. We would not want, the risk would be too great if we missed something. Um, and I do know a lot of primary cares and someone did mention that it might be not, not an option, but they're coming up with uh, methods because they realize most schools are handling it this way. So I, I, I really don't anticipate that all of these will be in-person doctor's appointments versus um, phone calls. But I, again, every doctor is different, so I don't wanna make promises, but that's some of the, the, the discussions we've been having with some of the local pediatricians. Um, Michelle, while you're on, if a rapid COVID is done, is that an acceptable return to school? No, unfortunately, uh, the guidance yeah. is pretty clear on this. Um, even if, it, you know, and it depends. Um, if they're a symptomatic child and they get tested and they're negative, they're going to be out for um, 14 days just because of the, the false negatives. Um, but that, that is, the guidance is very clear on that. So a, a negative, and again, depends on why you got tested, but if you were symptomatic, the negative test wouldn't allow you back into school. Okay. Um, this is one for Ms. Miriam. Um, if a teacher is sick, will there be a substitute? 
Yes. Okay. Um, another one for you. Is there a certain, maybe this is for Michelle too. Is there a certain number of days a child can miss? So I think very much similar to last year that that will be a non-issue. Um, usually it becomes an issue after um, 14 days, but because obviously that's like, hey, you know. yeah. So I think that is not something to worry about at this point, especially in our grade level. And with the fact that we can make up time or if we know that it's going to be a 14 day something we can um, have the child move into the remote class for that time period. I think that that's something that we don't need to worry about. Okay, so someone else had a question pertaining to that. So hopefully that covers that question. Um, will anybody be testing the environment walls, desks, objects for contamination. No, there won't be any like testing in that you know, per se, but there'll be a frequent cleaning, disinfecting, sanitizing, all of the above um, quite frequently. Um, you know, the, the offer, Boston Children's just had a webinar for school nurses um, and over 1,300 school nurses joined, which goes to show you the, the interest. And, it, you know, the epidemiologists just discussed that the mode of transmission that they worry the most about is direct contact from person to person. They said um, that the indirect contact, meaning off of surfaces is incredibly low and she even threw out a number at six percent i don't i don't have anything to back that up but she threw out the number of only six percent um so obviously we're going to be cleaning surfaces frequently throughout the day but nothing official with testing of surfaces okay um will confirmed exposure of a classmate or teacher be disclosed to other families uh can you read that question again sure Will confirmed exposure of a classmate or teacher be disclosed to other families? Um, if you mean a positive test result, um, so. yes. So, so in a case, in a situation that um, someone tests positive in, in any situation, the way it's set up is you will ideally be contacted by the local board of health in your town. If you're not, if for some reason you don't live in Sutton, the few that may not, or the community tracing collaborative, the CTC. And they will also guide you, your, your, whoever ordered the test that calls and gives you the results will also guide you, as well as the school nurses will be involved and they will be guiding you as well. Um, but yes, we will be, that we're, obviously we have to maintain privacy, but we will be notifying um, the school community when we have a positive case. And okay. just to um, reiterate what we talked about before, that we will be notifying classrooms if someone is sick in their class. Now, just because someone was sent home sick does not mean that they necessarily have COVID, but we're doing it as a courtesy and to be extra cautious so that the family members can make their own choices as far as if they want to then go visit grandma and grandpa that weekend or something along those lines. So it's more of a courtesy that we're gonna be sending home those notes, but again, we have to maintain confidentiality and let the families make their decision. Now it'll be, um, we'll be contacting you if there is a positive case and you're considered a close contact. Okay, great. Um, I think you can go ahead with medication drop off. Sorry to okay. take so a little detour little... there. <laughs> Perfect. So um, a little bit different this year, medication drop off, the full protocol was sent home to families but epinephrine and asthma medications are considered to be rescue medications. And we are allowing children to carry them in their backpacks on the first day of school. Um, so if you're cohort A, that'll be Monday, Monday. Cohort B will be Thursday. Um, along with the medications, please make sure that all of the medication forms are filled out appropriately. You can find all of those forms on our website. Um, all other medication must be provided to the school nurse by a parent or a guardian. So please feel free to call us so that we can schedule a time for you to drop it off and we can meet you outside. Okay, go ahead. Um, so there has been a change in um, our ability to give to administer nebulizers this year. We are not allowed to do that. So if your child does have a nebulizer, please contact their primary care provider. To, for alternate asthma medications. Um, along with that, parents of children that are asthmatics will know that you do need an asthma action plan as well. And um, just be aware that we are definitely still going to be giving inhalers. 
Okay. So just lastly, a few additional reminders. Um, please remember to send your child in with an extra clean face mask every day. Send your child with a water bottle as we are not allowing the water bubblers or the water fountains to be used this year. Send in, um, just try to think ahead, um, make sure to bring their, to send in their lunch, any extra clothes that they may, may need, any snacks, um, because we are really limiting any visitors into the school building. And at, for visitors, I mean all parents. So our goal is to keep the students and the staff safe this year, so we can't allow extra people into the building. Please start having your child practice wearing their face mask. And it's important to start to talk to your child about how the school year may look a little bit different. Um, those kids that were here last year are definitely going to notice the difference this year. So it's important to, for families to start to talk to them so they know what to expect. Um, lastly, I just wanna say thank you to the families of Sutton. Um, we have to come together and collaborate. Um, we're asking for a lot of communication with families and it's going to be a true commitment for all of us in order to keep everyone safe. So lastly, I just, um, we can take some more questions and then listed I have the middle and high school nurses information as well as the Simonian Center and Elementary School. That's it. All right, Ann, you're up. <laughs> There's just a couple questions here. Okay. Um, how will we know what to send, like in regard to extra clothes? And does this get sent daily or is there a locker? And this is referring to kindergarten. Okay, so Ms. Mary, I'm gonna have you touch base yes. on the cubbies. So we ask that an extra set of clothing come in with every kindergartner and we keep it either in their locker or in their cubby in the classroom. And that's because, you know, it's kindergarten and sometimes you spill paint and sometimes you forget to ask to go to the bathroom because you really enjoy what you're doing. Um, and when they get dirty, we send them home in a plastic bag and you send in another set. So it's really just sort of, as you need it, we'll send it home, you know, we send it home and you'll send in another one. And it just gets kept in their room or in their um, cubby. The other thing is that if you know your child drinks a lot of water, maybe send in two water bottles. So just trying, just trying to plan ahead. Yeah. We can fill them up at lunchtime. There is bottled water at lunch, but. There is one hand raised here. I don't know if Eric has a question mm -hmm. or, okay. We are clear from questions in the chat right now. Ooh, should we send them in with their own hand sanitizer? Good question. Good question. You can, if you want. Um, we, I can tell you we have adequate uh, hand sanitizers throughout the school, but if you want them to have their own, they are more than welcome to carry it and use their own as well. Okay, this is a non-nurse question. Um, how will kids be graded for the first quarter? Okay, well, we run on trimesters. Um, and actually the first trimester is not graded. Um, it is a parent teacher conference, which will be happening over Zooms. Um, so it will be a conference um, call. It will be a conference call um, with your teacher. Sorry, okay. smiling kid got distracted. <laughs> that looks like it in the chat for now, so. anybody has anything else that they want to ask before we sign off for the night? I do want to say, so anyone that had questions, didn't get an email, wanted to get an information out, just email me. It's miriamj at suttonschools.net. So M-E-R-R-I-A-M-J at suttonschools.net. And I will um, dash it off to whoever it needs to go to. Okay. Um, there's a couple questions in here that you had talked about, but so we're just going to clarify them again. Okay. Um, if my child is doing hybrid but is home with a runny nose, can he join the other cohort's remote learning class? For example, B cohort attends A cohort's remote learning so he can still learn during this time. So, <laughs> um, so it doesn't really makes sense to do that because then they're going they're just going to do it on the day that um hi guys 
that they would have done it. So they're not really making up for it. They're just doing it a day early. Um, so I would suggest if they're homesick that they just kind of do the homesick stuff and work on, you know, feeling better and, and stuff like that. Um, just because we won't, it's the same material happening Monday, Tuesday at home that it is Thursday, Friday. So whether they do it, you know, Tuesday or Thursday doesn't really matter. Um, cause they can't come to school the other day. So I don't know if I'm being very clear about that. Um, but the same material happens remote, whether it's, you know, the A group or the B group. Um, do remote kids have one teacher or two, like hybrid? Full remote um, has w one teacher and some aides. Okay. And then if we go back in, will before care and after care be open? I don't have an answer to that. I would assume that it would pick up, um, but it's a separate program from us, so I'm not positive. Okay, and the parent asking about the medication forms, Katie just answered that in the chat, and I think that's it. All right, well, thank you, everybody. I'm looking forward to seeing you all in small groups next week at our um, open house. Be well, everyone. No runny noses. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Have a good night. Bye. See you tomorrow. Bye. <laughs> Jess, I saved the chat, so hopefully it went to your cloud. If it didn't, I have it on a folder on my computer, I think. Okay. Okay. Actually, maybe I can just copy.